Hey guys, Sableye here, and welcome back to another episode of the Multi Battle Conference Season 5. Of course, you guys know at this point, I'm not alone. Fiona, please. Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Uh, two things I want to get out of the way here before we, uh, well, this whole screen kicks off and before we get into things, guys. Uh, one, stick around for this match. If you don't watch any other Doesn't Click video for the rest of the season, watch this one. This is a match you want to watch. It was an amazing battle. Uh, secondly, I apologize for the no commentary on last week's video. Uh, Fiona's and myself's schedule didn't really line up. We recorded once, the audio kind of broke, and I, it, was, it wasn't worth saving. So unfortunately, we didn't get audio there. But uh, I think it's time to focus... love technology. <laughs> OBS, if OBS could stop crashing my computer, that would be amazing. But Fiona, let's talk about this one now. Let's, let's, let's refocus here. Ben and Vichy, two amazing players. Yeah, these guys have gotten finalists if I remember before I want to say back I want to say back to back finalists yeah no yes no yeah. maybe they, they, I no. remember they've made playoffs twice they've made I think they made I think they've gotten third seed going into playoffs every single season they've played and I think that's three seasons so they're yeah. they're good <laughs> they're good they know what they're doing and they can prep so yeah this matchup was very scary because it was very it was a very offensive um draft they had it was like Reggie Drago, Indeedy, Blaziken, yeah. very scary Mon. A lot of very scary Mons. Even Gengar, obviously, you don't think of Gengar as like, oh, the biggest. Cortana. The most, yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't think of Gengar as like, oh, big, big offensive threat. But doesn't it have like one? Is it one ten special attack? I'm pretty sure it's one thirty. No, the speed is one thirty. I think it's one ten. No, the, Gengar is a uh, one ten speed. 130 special attack. I right, right, right. Sorry, I'm thinking of Mega Gengar. My bad. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Gengar has 170 special attack. No, I was talking speed-wise, though, is what I was saying. But anyways, team's on the screen right now, guys. But uh, as you can see, this offensive play style, me and Fiona do not like going up against it. We have some, we have a few techs. Should be fun. And we did bring this Lagoo sitting there. He's just chilling. He's vibing. Yeah, he's vibing. He's <laughs> ready to go. Mm -hmm. But our game plan here was to basically, they didn't, if we got up Trick Room, they didn't really have much they could do to uh, yeah. do anything against it. So we decided our big plan was to leave Aromatis and Urshifu, have two high power, have a high power mod on the field, and have a Trick Room setter. Yeah. So that we get uh, our Trick Room abuser in uh, Escavalier. Almost called it Hest, but it is. <laughs> you could have called it Hest too. I mean, it's the same, it's the same Pokemon the same picture <laughs> all right but uh yeah honestly the, well the other good thing about leading urshifu was that it wasn't just a full-on commitment to straight up trick room right because i don't know leading straight up trick room like you can see by the lead they're gonna bring it's they were kind of prepared for it i think so giving ourselves the chance to have at least a damaging output going into turn one if they tried to stop trick room we had that option right so either way we're gonna get into things now and absolutely crazy game. Yeah, it was certainly a crazy game. Um, so as we said, we are going to be leading off with the Aromatis and the Urshifu here, and they lead with um, Gengar and uh, Katana. <clears throat> Mind game time! <laughs> and now this is a very weird situation, because if they double into Aromatis here, they will KO us, at least we thought. <laughs> it would have been a really close game, and we, didn't, we couldn't risk that, right? But at the same time... <laughs> We know Ben and Vichy, and we know they're very capable of doubling the Urshifu. Mm -hmm. So it was one of the things where we had to kind of figure out which way they were going to go with it. So it was it was definitely an interesting uh, turn one here. Yeah, and um, we basically decided if they do call our protect and kill Urshifu, uh, we're not in the worst spot because both of these Pokemon cannot pressure a Scavalier. So even if that does happen, like that, we're, at worst case scenario, we don't get trip up trick room, but we're guaranteed kill one of two, one of one or two of these things. Yeah, if and mad boost with our max. Yeah, and that's basically what me and Fiona are discussing and why this turn is taking seven years. <laughs> but uh, we're basically figuring out, okay, if they call this protect here, is this cavalier good enough to actually at least do enough? And we came up with yes. So they're gonna go smart strike. <laughs> Right into Urshifu, and at this point, I was like, okay, we're done. <laughs> Not that we were done, but like the turn one was terrible. That was a very good turn one on there, and the Dazzling Gleam was really smart. Yeah, I honestly forgot. I, I knew it had Dazzling Gleam, but you know, I just kind of forgot about it. E exactly. It's one of those things where 
you look at it in prep and you're like, well, they could run that. It's an interesting tech, right? And then you get to the game and I, we, I think we both just said, eh, they won't have Dazzling Gleam. We just kind of kind of brushed it off, never thought about it. And uh, it dropped us, so... <laughs> Gengar, Gengar's yeah. too good, I guess. But like like we said, uh, we made it so that in turn two, Ryan would have the max here so yep. he can max uh, the Escavalier. And... Basically, we don't really lose anything. Like, it sucks to lose Urshifu without getting damage off and not getting Circum in the same turn. Yeah. But sure. these Pokemon cannot pressure a Scavalier in the slightest. So that means we do get, like, a knockout of our choice. Yeah, and something I do want to point out here is that this Kartana very well could Dynamax right now. And I was fully expecting and ready for them to do so. Mm hmm and uh, we're gonna see how they decide to play this here. I obviously am gonna watch just a steel spike into this Gengar because, like, to me, hitting Kartana is not, I don't wanna say useless, but hitting Gengar, that's 90% of the time where the Sash is gonna be. So if we can break that Sash, and I'm not sure if you guys saw on Team Preview, we do have a Scar Volcarona in the back. So basically, the game plan was if we break the Sash and they kill Aromatis here and don't give us Trick Room, we get Vol Volcarona and click Heatwave to pick up two knockouts which doesn't yeah. really put us in a terrible spot. Obviously, still not great because they get free switchings, but Smart Strike from Heather coming out into Aromatease. Aromatease can eat it with that Babiri Berry, and I'm sitting here, I'm going, okay, they're going to Sludge Bomb. Do we die to Sludge Bomb? It's going to be really close. And then they decide to do this. Sludge Wave. I don't know why they had Sludge Wave. It was an interesting prep decision, but uh, Sherbert, hanging on with 2 HP. Let's go, Aromatease. <laughs> Yeah, Robotique's uh, got that, a lot of bulk on it. It's you you, bulkier than a lot of the other carries. Yeah. You guys know why You guys know why I was preaching uh, Aromatique in that uh, draft, uh, draft analysis now. But anyways, uh, that crit I don't think mattered. They were either going to Sash anyways, or going to be just just shy, just outside of Sash. So, I don't think it was too big of a deal. Alright, so now, they're not going to Dynamax here. Not, not Their in... thing is on a 1 HP Gengar. Why would they Dynamax a 1 HP Gengar? Not maxing a 1 HP Gengar or even... Or even, or a Kartana in Trick Room. They just don't do it. It's, it's not something you do. So what our thought process was, since Kartana can not Dynamax, we have the opportunity to kill it if we just double into yep. it. it. By the way, it's a crime that uh, Aromatisse does not get Mystical Fire. It's a fairy. All these new fairies got Mystical Fire this game. Why not Aromatisse? Right? <laughs> Right? Give Aromatis Mystical Fire. Someone someone put that... Honestly, it, I think it might be too good if it got Mystical Fire. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's good enough. Gardevoir runs it. That's they gave true. it to Gardevoir. They gave it to Gardevoir. I mean, I guess, how? look at this thing. How does this thing get the fire? Then again, how do the rest of the fairies do it? So know. really. Fiery nose, when you blow your nose, it feels like it's burning. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, Fiona, why? Why unleash this in the world? <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna get this knuckle off here. Basically getting our attack boost, which is another key element here to our uh, gameplay here. And I, I'm sitting here going, this, there's no way this Moonblast kills. Fiona, yeah, I was worried about it being Assault Vest because we know the Sash is on me. Right? Yeah, I did not yeah, think, are, right? I did not think this was gonna kill. But, uh, Aromatis provided. <laughs> <laughs> Picks up its first yeah. kill of this season, which you love to see. And well, that, not, you know, Sludge Bomb is new, but they actually Shadow Ball. Yeah. I, I and thought they hit this Death Drop, which is really unfortunate. Yeah, it, it was definitely annoying. And honestly, I'm going to be honest here, guys. I'm I'm actually shocked they didn't just kill the Aromatis. Yeah. I don't think it mattered in the long run. Like, it, maybe they were saying Aromatis doesn't really put on too much pressure. And because Aromatis doesn't really put on too much pressure, it allows for them, they can leave it on the field and kind of stall it our trick room easier than maybe whatever we have in the back. I, I could see that being the case on their end. I don't know, I'm just trying to analyze kind of both sides here, because like, I don't know, maybe I, I, I wonder if I would have taken that bait on the Aromatis there. But either way, Indeedee coming in. So, <clears throat> we know Indeedee is not Bash because of the fact that Gengar is Bash. So we basically get a free kill on the uh, Indeedee because the Scavalier is moving for Aromatis, so Aromatis can take up a 1 HP Gengar. Yeah. So we do just as we- we all have a bug move, but I don't think we need a bug move because we're plus 1 and we're back to the knuckle. So. Yep. Yeah. It would have been cool to have a bug move, but like, based on their team, it wasn't the coverage we needed. Like, Indeedee's defense isn't that solid anyways, so we can go away- get, get away with just not having it here. And 
I don't know what took us so long this turn. I really don't know. Yeah, oh, sure. you know what? No, I do remember. It was me contemplating whether or not I wanted to quake back for my uh, defense boost. My spadef boost to get that back. Mm -hmm. But indeed, he goes for protect here. Uh, makes sense because they just wanted to burn some of our map. And, and we just get the free knockout into the yeah. Vanguard. Guess, guess what, guys? Guess what, guys? Aroma Tease, it's second knockout. Let's go! Let's, Let's go, go, Aroma! Aroma's gonna do it! <laughs> Anyways, Aroma picks up his second knockout there. And uh, it's beast. Simple as that. So now, they could bring in. Don't think they want to bring the Drago under room here, because of no. course it's Cavalier and uh, Aroma Tease exists, so they have to bring in their Swamper. Here it is, the groundwater type that we wanted. The Swampert. <laughs> I still hate Seismitoad, guys. Swampert, come back, please. I just want Swampert. I mean, Seismitoad got a tour this weekend. <laughs> <Hey>. We're Swamp. <laughs> no, no, just no. <laughs> Anyways, surely Iron Head kills this uh, Indeedee here, right? We're plus one, it's an Indeedee. You saw how much the uh, Steel Spikes are protected. You gotta think Iron Head's gonna be really, really close. Yeah. Like, I was pretty confident it would be killed there because mm. we saw the damage. And we just have energy ball for the Swampert. Not a we big deal chunk at all. It. We didn't expect to KO it at all. I expected Rindleberry to be completely honest. Mm hmm. But, uh, anyways, we're gonna see how this turn plays out right now. I don't wanna get too far ahead here. They do just go follow me, of course, as expected. And here's the big Iron Head. I don't know how this thing Iron Heads. The Scavalier gets. Mean, uh, it no. literally got an Iron Head, but of course they no. live on one health. And Aroma Tease gets its third knockout. Aroma Tease. Aroma. Okay, sorry, I'm bad. But no, what I'm saying with Iron Head is it doesn't have the the shape, the head shape for the Iron Head. You know, it's got like this razor thing on its head. Like, yeah. it's, if you're gonna give this thing Iron Head, give Iron Head to Empoleon. Yeah, give Iron Head to Empoleon. Empoleon got raw. Empoleon got robbed big time. But anyways, we're not here to talk about Empoleon getting robbed. And they did yawn uh, the Sherbert there. They want to put our ice cream to sleep. I will say if Shining Diamond or and Brilliant Pearl or whatever it's called uh, doesn't have Iron Head for Empoleon, I will not buy the game. It's I will weird. not buy the game! <laughs> 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 Alright, but uh, basically at this point we decided to stay in. Uh, I was expecting Duncan to max. We, or not, sorry, not to max, but to protect. So we were all expecting mm -hmm. to protect here, right? And they they max. And they do max. Which... Now I I'm gonna talk about this turn because I think it makes sense in the sense that you don't want to be forced to non-max the next turn. Yes, exactly. The max is going to uh, hurt. Exactly. I was gonna say the same thing, and I was gonna bring that up, but definitely a good point because the way the alternating maxes work here, they kind of were forced to max here and waste the turn by guarding. Which is absolutely phenomenal for us. Of course, we did drill run into this uh, Blazer Kit. And it was kind of off the off chance that maybe they just expected us to predict to protect and they wouldn't uh, and they wouldn't have protected, right? So I wanted to take a chance, potential chance at that. And either way, that Herald's going to take that relatively well. And I think they yawned again, correct? Yeah. Just in case I decided to switch my two health aromatease out. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we, aromatease was done, done to us. We, we were going to sit here and just have a good day. Yeah, honestly, I expected it to die a lot, like, turn two of the game. Yeah, so I know, I'm right? Clear, like, I don't know what turn this is, but it's still alive. Still alive, has three kills. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, definitely a wild game. So now that room is over, and this end game's a little bit concerning, because my entire side dies to plays again. And my entire and side game. doesn't, like, I mean, Seismitoad in the back, as much as it's as good as it can be, it, it can't singly single-handedly do everything you know mm -hmm. so like the moment they can start just picking off Fiona's side we actually get a lot of we actually get in a lot of trouble right because they can just start taking has to down here so basically the big debate here is are they gonna target a scavalier or can we take advantage of the fact that maybe hey they're gonna go after they're gonna try and knuckle this aromatease here predicting us not to protect you or to switch out uh, made the safe play of course not gonna risk that a knuckle into aromatease might have ended the game to be completely honest. I don't okay, the reason why I think they targeted that is because they they most likely thought we were A B on this one. And yeah, then Honestly, I would agree. And I think they mentioned that as well when we were uh, talking post game as well. 
Mm -hmm. They thought they forgot we weren't AV. But because uh, the knuckle there definitely could have uh, knuckle and disturbed right there, we were in trouble. If yeah. They, if they if they call that right, and it was one of those things where we had to predict if they were gonna call it. I mean, we we luckily got it. Thankfully, got it right. Simple as that. But this end game so, is terrifying. This end game, like at least the ver the reason why we did protect this is because we wanted to stall their last turn of max, and we have a chance against. Uh, yeah, Toad, Toad, can't, yeah, Toad can't beat a Dynamax Blaziken. Toad may be able to beat a regular Blaziken, though. Yeah. Well, Blaziken's defense, you know, is not the best. Yeah. Blaziken. So. Blaziken's really offensive, and if you get into positions like they're in right now, it's exactly where they want to be. Yeah. You know, minus maybe the fact that we still have five mods, but... <laughs> now, they are life warp, so they will be damaging themselves to be put in range of uh, Toad move. Yep, very smart uh, oh, airstream. Airstream was a very good play here because that gives their Drago a speed boost. Yep. And I think for what they, for the board position they saw, they needed to go for that, right? Yes. Uh, that is Dragon minus Energy. one Dragon Energy just picks us up. I mean, it, we were we were getting picked up whether or not we were minus one or not. <laughs> yeah. It, it it's a Dragon Fang boosted Dragon Energy. Like we were dead. Pass two, I'm, unfortunately, was not living that. We weren't AB. We had the uh, we didn't get a quake boost up either, so yeah. And in comes Slippy. So in this position, we have both Slippy and uh, a Decidueye on the field, and they're forced to pick one target to kill mm -hmm. because both Seismitoad and uh, Decidueye throw knockout. Yep. I thought personally they were gonna go after Slippy here because they wouldn't expect us to have, you know. Anything, uh, decide you to be able to kill the uh, Blaziken. So I figured, you know, they'd go after Slippy and they'd take care of Slippy and then they play the 2v1 side, right? Yeah. And I still think that may have been their better play. I, I agree. Like, I think if they double Slippy, they win. I, I agree. But either way, we're going to see what they end up going with here. And it's one of the things where I'm obviously AV on the slip, right? So I've got to sit in here, and I think I went stomping tantrum because we're in the sun. Obviously, I can't go safely for the liquidation, so I have to go for the tantrum. And uh, hope it picks up nothing. Yeah, I was very confident it would because Blaziken, you know, his defense is not very good. Neither yeah. is his HP. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know what's funny? In all the calx we ran in prep, I don't think this regular one came up here. I, so I always, knockoff it comes out, which makes sense because they want to not take recoil. Yep. But they still take recoil from the life of here, so. Yep. And here's the Dragon, Dragon Energy. Energy does come out. Thank you for coming out, Robin. I appreciate your service. That does so much damage. <laughs> really, it really does. And this is where things get tight. Stop, stopping Tantrum in the Blaziken. Is it enough? It is enough, just barely, I think. Yeah. I, I actually don't know that count. Cause like I was saying, we didn't actually run that calc. The calc I ran was for the liquidation. It wasn't mm -hmm. for the stomping tantrum, but I didn't expect to be in a spot where they'd have stun up, which maybe is bad prep on our end, but it's okay. Yeah. Here comes Mothra. And Scarf, Volcarona, guys, coming in for the clutch right now. Scarf, Volcarona, saves us. <laughs> right? Uh, here, I obviously ice punch. There's no real reason for me to do anything else. We're into sun liquidation, but also resisted. Tantrum's not worth it. And power up, of course. Power up sucks. Um, yeah. I ice punch. There's no, there's no reason not to. Switching is seismic. Not seismic. But switching is swapper. So. Yeah. And um, basically, I was trying to think about whether uh, Psychic was or uh, Struggle Bug. Struggle Bug was 100% the play because you don't need to go for the chip damage here because the little bit of chip damage you get plus the special attack drop that stacks onto their uh, dragon energy here, which they do opt to go for, right? Because they have to try and break both. So they, they honestly, that Struggle Bug did so much damage. Can we talk about that? Yeah, I know. Volcarona is broken. We got to use this thing more, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, and now it that, actually did not much. Yeah, I know. The Ice Punch did nothing compared to the Struggle Bug. Slippy sucked. <laughs> Honestly, I think this thing maybe have maybe has good defense. No, so we just didn't. We are we're the dumb bulky slippy. I don't even think we have attack stat. But apparently, I look after it. Reggie Drago's but F is like fifty, which is terrible. Yeah, and struggle books not uh, not being spread right. It actually has a decent base power. What is it sixty five? 
Uh, no, it's 50 actually. Oh, that's about as high. I mean, still, not being spread, 50 is not the worst thing in the world. Coming off of Volcarona? Either way, it's in range of Struggle Bug, it's 100% accurate. Oh, it should drop. So guys, just an update, I just looked up uh, Reggie Drago's defense, and it's the exact same as it's for. <laughs> yeah, so we're writing this off to as Slippy sucks, as to why that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> and Ice Punch, of course, going into nowhere, but I obviously launch off an attack on AB. So, there's really no reason not to. And, in comes the perp. Yeah. Pert, it shouldn't be able to beat both. It does have enough, it does have a good chunk of HP, but we saw the yawn earlier, you see the three minutes come up, and I think personally, as I almost misplay there and lock into Power Whip, I, I don't even know, was the sun still up at this point? No. No, right? Because if the sun was still up, I should have definitely gone for High Horse Power, but it looks like the sun's gone, so Liquidation, definitely going to be the play, but, okay, so... No, it doesn't get High Horse Power, sadly. <laughs> Makes no sense. Not high horsepower, sorry, stomping tantrum, but anyways. Yeah. Seismitoad is not a horse, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> anyway, struggle ball going in. Is. I was under the impression that because there was support, they would probably go special. Back in the days when we would run pert, we would go special. Although we didn't have access to flip turn or anything like that physically, so. Either way, so I expected struggle bug and then them not to be even able to pick up Volcarona. But here comes the struggle bug. And that did a lot. Volcarona is broken, guys. Anyways, flip turn coming out. And flip turn goes into Mothra here. And this is one of those moments where it's one of those things where, you know, you wonder if they had a non water move on, on Swamp Earth. Mm -hmm. You have to sit here and wonder could they actually have killed Slippy? I feel like the answer is yes. I feel like the answer is yes as well, but I don't know if they would have had like an earthquake. But I feel like high horsepower from the range we were at was going to kill us. Yeah. So definitely happy I didn't go for the power up and potentially miss. That would have been the biggest throw of our lives. But yeah. <laughs> and, tr and, tr and trust me, me and Fiona throw a lot. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, seriously, though, amazing battle uh, right here as the video starts to loop. But. Uh, yeah, I think that's just gonna be uh, that's gonna be about it, guys. We're two and one on the season now, which is solid. Long, it's actually a gauntlet of a season, guys. Eleven weeks, which is a little longer than you'd expect, but like it's still it's good though, right? Because like you can kind of lose a few games early and not be completely just out of the playoffs. So like mm -hmm. I don't know, I like seeing I like seeing seasons develop. Same thing with the formats in VGC. I like seeing how it develops as time goes on. But uh, hey, two and one off to the start of the season. The differential isn't there as we got slapped last week, but we don't talk about last week, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, well, that was a really scary game. Like that end game was very nerve wracking. For sure, it's it's mo it's games like this where you kind of think about how this is why I play. This is why I play. You know. Mm -hmm. And this is why I do NBC. And it's it was a back and forth battle. It was a really good set. I enjoyed our game. I, I'm so used to saying set, but it was a back and forth <laughs> game. I really did enjoy that. But uh, Fiona, unless you got anything else here, uh, we're going to get out of here before we uh, just talk everybody's ear off for the next 20 minutes. Yeah, I got nothing. You got nothing. Of course you do. Of course you got nothing. <laughs> Look at these Badoo, though. These Badoo are just vibing. <laughs> They're just vibing. They're chilling. Anyways, okay, I'm done. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to subscribe so you don't miss out on more co uh, more content, uh, please feel free to do so. Also, feel free to leave a like on the video. I really would appreciate that. And, uh... I don't know why I'm doing that at the end of my videos now, but I still have no outro, guys. So with that, I'm going to get out of here, and I will catch you guys next week for more NBC action.